But while he was talking about this, he had a glint in his eye, and at the end he said, do you know what? I'd much rather shoot for the stars and land on the moon than go for the sky and sit in the clouds. And I thought that was such a fantastic way of looking at things. Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got a bit of a different video for you today. Very much a vloggy style. We're out on the North York Moors. It's Saturday morning. I've got an hour and a half run to get through, but we've got a lot to catch up on. We're going to be talking about speed work, how I'm going to build into my park runs and use that to get fast for the Yorkshire Three Peaks. We're also going to discuss a big race I've got coming up next year in September. I'm going to reveal exactly what that is. Little hint, 10,000 foot of elevation gain over marathon distance. And I want to talk about what I've learned from an Olympian because it's completely changed my mindset for the better. Right, let's grab a few more bits and hit the trails. Right guys, let's kick things off with a quick update. So I'm finally past that dead leg uh, that kept me out for three or four weeks. Last week just gone, we managed the first bit of speed work and this goes into what I really wanna talk about today. It's important to do those high-end aerobic sessions, but you've got to do it in a safe way and one that really aids your long-term development. There's no point in having one or two weeks worth of really solid fast speed work for you to get injured and lose all of your progress. So I tend to lay a foundation of easy runs before I even think about putting the faster sessions in. I call this my baseline. We can then build from that. So last week I did four 600 meter 5K efforts with three minutes break between each. Now that's just a small session in the grand scheme of things. I'm used to doing more like six, 800 meters with just two minutes of rest but I'm just coming back from an injury and I'm just starting my first block of speed work in a very, very long time. So to go in with those efforts straight off the bat will not aid my long-term development. On Monday, we've got a Mona Getty. It's a really high-end session. You end up doing two 90-second flat-out sprints with 90 seconds break between each. You then get, I think it's two one minute hard efforts, one minute break between each, down to 30 seconds and 15 seconds. And your recovery drops as well. So it's a horrible session to do, but so good for that high-end aerobic fitness. The great thing with these sessions is they produce great results without taking too much away from you. Because really, with a 15 minute warm up and cool down, it should only take you about 40 minutes to do. Now, the other important thing to remember is every session has its place. So I'm going towards improving my 5K time right now. That's because I want to improve my overall high-end aerobic fitness to then push that on into my moderate pace runs that I can use for my marathon efforts and do a better time in the Yorkshire 3 peaks. It's all a long-term development thing, but each training plan you do should happen in phases. So my first phase is to build a baseline, make myself safe to do the speed work. I'm then going to introduce the easier parts of the speed work, so the reduced reps and reduced duration um, at that higher end speed. I'm going to do park runs as tests because it's only a short amount of time I'm going at a high-end effort for. We will then pick up 
the duration and the amount of reps I do in each of the sessions until eventually by the end of winter, I should be doing some really tough, tough sessions that I'll look back on and think, how the hell did I even get there? It's a process, guys. It takes hard work and a lot, a lot of patience but it reaps fantastic reward. But the reason I say every training plan should be done in sections, guys, is because you can't do it all in one go. You can't be doing loads of high-end speed work two or three times a week and go out and do a four-hour easy run on a Saturday. Your energy needs to be put where it matters at the right time. And talking of speed work, next weekend, I've got Dolby Forest Park Run. Really can't wait for that. It's been so long since I've done a park run. I think probably a year and a half, maybe even more now. And the last time I did a PB was probably three years ago. So we'll be bringing you a vlog from that one for sure. A couple of weeks ago, I had the pleasure of Mark Foster's company. I was at a conference and got to listen to him talk about his career in swimming, going from a kid who was afraid of the water to an Olympian, a world champion, European champion, and Commonwealth gold medalist. The guy's a complete pro, but what really caught my eye was his relationship with his goals. Mark spoke about how he always dreamed of winning the Olympics one day. Mark's best chance of Olympic gold came right towards the end of his career when he was in the prime of his life. He was four weeks out from the qualifiers and he got an injury. He managed to get back just in time, did everything he could, but he was still 0.02 of a second shy of that qualifying time. Even though that was one of the fastest times set that year in the pool, the selectors still wouldn't give him his place. But while he was talking about this, he had a glint in his eye, and at the end he said, do you know what? I'd much rather shoot for the stars and land on the moon than go for the sky and sit in the clouds. And I thought that was such a fantastic way of looking at things. How often do we set ourselves goals that are either reaching too far, and how often do we set the bar too low because we're afraid of failing? And Mark went on to say that if he hadn't strived to win the Olympics one day, a goal that was reaching he didn't know he could ever achieve, he wouldn't have done half the things he managed in his career. But it's not just about aiming high. For me, it was the mindset that actually, except you are probably gonna fail if your goals are big enough. And that's okay, because in pushing yourself to reach and strive so far, imagine all the things you could achieve along the way in the journey to getting there. This is why I set myself long-term goals that maybe aren't achievable. At the end of the day, what I will have to achieve to get anywhere near reaching those goals will be impressive in itself. You don't even know me like that. Are you pressed for time? Put you on my mind. Come a little closer like that. Staying up all night, throwing drinks back. And talking of goals, let's talk about that big race I've got coming up in September. So I've always wanted to go to another country and do a big mountain marathon. Now, my wife is from Romania. I've not seen my parents-in-law for so many years now, but there is a new race organized by the guys who do Transvulcania. Um, it starts from Bran Castle, which is Dracula's castle, and it's called the OMU Marathon. So it's 42K, almost 10,000 foot of elevation gain, and I will be running at twice the elevation height I've ever run at before for more than half of the race. It's bonkers. Um, it's probably the hardest race I'll have ever done in my life, and there's no way I can train for those sort of climbs in the build-up. So we'll just be going for the views, to have a bit of fun, and just to see what happens. 
So we've got so much to look forward to. We've got the Scarfell Marathon, Yorkshire Three Peaks, and all the other races we mentioned in the last vloggy type episode. But what are you guys doing? I'd love to know. What races have you got planned for the rest of this year? And what races are you doing in 2022? Let me know down in the comments. That sign behind me marks the end of the run, guys. Leverstrom's just this way. So let me know what you think to this sort of content. Would you like to see more of it, more vloggy style stuff from me? And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. And I will catch you hopefully with a park run report. God, it's going to hurt uh, next week. See you later.